The Great Search brought to you by Digikey Native for every single legal aid use a power of engineering to help you, yes, you find the things that you need online on digikey.com. Thank you, Digikey, for making this segment possible. Lady Ada, what's the Great Search of the Week this week? Okay, this um, subject this week is finding replacement capacitors because I actually saw a really great thread. It's an older thread, but it was tweeted by DigiKey on how to find replacement electrolytic capacitors. Um, so first up, let me show you what we mean, because there's a lot of different capacitors. And by doing that, let's grab this handy dandy Apple II disk II um, disk drive. So if you go to the overhead. Focus in. Okay, so oftentimes when you're dealing, you know, there's people who want to repair or um, rework old uh, designs. And, you know, it, it's easy to get, you can actually get electronics that it's like, you know, 30, 40 years old at this point, stuff that was made in the, the 80s. Um, there's even stuff that this was made in the 70s. Um, boy, that's, that's tough. That's like 40 plus years old. Um, and, um, you want to repair it and it doesn't work. And you're like, well, what, what can possibly go wrong? Like when you have solid state devices, which this is thankfully, there's some stuff that's going to, um, be damaged a bowl and some that kind of wasn't, won't. So chips like this ULN, this can be blown out, like if it got damaged um, or from static electricity. But like the resistors, like resistors don't really go bad. Resistors are resistors. They sort of last forever, um, unless there's a mechanical strain. Um, there's also ceramic capacitors here. These little yellow um, blobby ones, those are um, ceramic capacitors. These big yellow disks are also ceramic capacitors those also tend not to go bad these uh red blobby ones those are uh film polymer pretty sure they they do sometimes go bad but um not super super often they're they're fairly more durable tantalums definitely dry out and electrolytics absolutely fail um and actually it's very common to see people talking about like recapping a motherboard or you know an arcade cabinet because the electrolytic capacitors uh dry out or um the electrolyte inside there's this liquid um it can flow out and uh it can also corrode the board around it and so thankfully it's very easy to find replacements um oh i think this is a tantalum actually you can see the plus this might be a tantalum capacitor kind of hard to see um it's fairly easy to replace electrolytic capacitors and DigiKey has them in like every stock shape and size. And so this thread, so let's go to the computer, um, is actually kind of neat. And it looks like they're still kind of up to, you know, they, they have two threads. There is um, this one, which is like a massive thread. Sorry, there's this. This one is a, is a tutorial thread. And uh, he goes through, you know, you you look on the capacitor and it says, especially big ones, it says 50 V one microfarad. It's like, man, that's so great. You know exactly what you're looking for. One microfarad, 50 volt capacitor. And he has some tips and tricks, temperature rating, you know, whether you do temperature rating and then the sizing, you can of course measure it. Um, he says, this one is a little bit more challenging because it's um, when you have surface mount, you don't have markings on the side. You have usually only markings on the top and um, the markings are not is obvious as these um large through hole ones where they say like they literally print out um all the details um uh, so for this one you want to look at um there's almost always gonna be three lines the top line is the capacitance the second line is the voltage rating which is confusing because it's a letter and then sometimes it's like a temperature or um model hb and then the third one is a lot code Again, this isn't like 100%, but it's like almost every single time it's going to be these three numbers. And one thing that's a little confusing is um, if you are if you have large capacitance, this can be, let's say you have um, like a, a 2,200 microfarad capacitor, 2,200, 2,200. Zero, zero. This would be 2,2,2 because two, 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 it would be 2,2 two, two plus two zeros. 
right? Let's take a resistor code. We have two digits of like significant of, of um, like numeric data, and then last digit is a number of zeros to put afterwards. But two two zero isn't two two zero zeros. It's actually two hundred twenty. So two two zero and two two one are actually the same number, two hundred twenty microfarads. So it's a little counterintuitive. If it's two two only, that's twenty two microfarad. And then if it's two dot two or like, you know, two u two or whatever, it's two point two. So this is it's a little bit different um, than resistors. And then here is what I didn't realize. So first off, the series code you can search on DigiKey by series code. And so in this case, HB will tell you, and uh, you know that'll give you a um, like hours rating and maybe like the physical size. But what I didn't realize is that letter underneath the number is the rating and the rating codes are like, it's done by letter and it's consistent across. And then I like started looking at all my capacitors. Like, oh my God, you're right, it's consistent. J for 6.3. 10 for A for 10 volts, C for 16 volts, E for 25, V for 35, and H for 50. Um, so when you're looking at a capacitor, um, you can use those numbers to I, you know, quickly figure out what it is and then use the DigiKey search to locate a capacitor with the same physical size and um, microfarad capacitance and the voltage, which are the three things that are most important. And then what's neat is that there is like a lot of people posting and you can like check out these threads and like you can like I kind of think it would be like a good quiz, like quiz time thing. It's like, OK, quick, can you find me this component and replacement? So this one, their question like, is this a 33 uh, microfarad or 330? And it's 330 despite this zero is confusing and it's six volt. They don't have the J so they just say six V, which is, you know, fine. Um, and then, you know, somebody replied and said, Hey, you know, here's what I think it is. Uh, this one is pretty easy. It's a 100 microfarad, 160 volts. And then even says on the side, 85 degrees C. There are ones that are, um, uh, higher temperature rating. And then this other thread is like chock full of people who are like, you know, here is, I have to replace this. So this is 100, so 100 microfarad, and then VHA, and then remember the first letter is going to be the voltage rating. So if you go up to here, this handy guide, 35 volts, because it's got a V. HA is the family, so you can search by HA, and then 1H3 is the, the lock code. And you can see this, they're actually people helping each other. This 47 microfarad, 50 volts. 47 microfarad, but then it's like, what is this U? I don't know if they have the U. This might not be clear. So what they said, oh, UD. Oh, sorry, the C is afterwards. So the C, this is the um, 47 microfarad, and it's not, UD is the lock code. C here is 16 volts. So you have to kind of like know where to look. Let's see. And then more people posting all sorts of capacitors. Um, check this out. OK. And then this one is sneaky. Apparently, this one is normally 47, uh, 470, but turns out it's 47. And then this O is a little smaller. It's a 47 microfarad and 60 volt. OK, so some examples to so check out that thread. So I thought we would do one live by looking at this one on my desk so let's go to the overhead and we'll pick it out okay so i happen to know what this is because i place this component but i figured it's good practice so 220 220 microfarads and then you see that j and then by looking at the table that i showed you from that digikey uh tech thread 6.3 volts then you take your um calipers and you measure the diameter 6.5 volts and then you measure the depth it's like a little bit it's a little tough to hold on depth six millimeters so 6.5 millimeters by six millimeters so then let's go to digikey can go to the computer and we'll look for 22 microfarads, 6.3 volts. 
You know, it's funny. It would be cool if I could use like ChatGPT to search this. So there's um, there's some web tools that you could point it at certain websites. Yeah. And I think there's a debate about um, the robots that text. Yeah. If, um, some of these tools can you know scrape them or whatever. Uh, Bard, I think you could point certain things. And what I think is going to happen is um, maybe even after this video, someone's going to use one of these tools to show you how to navigate a site like DigiKey. Um, and there'll probably be some helpful things. Um, or DigiKey, who uh, they're pretty sharp. I think they did the um, like DigiKey Alexa thing where you can ask Alexa for certain things with DigiKey. Yeah. Um, they might be working on that now. Um, to be straight up with everyone out there, we're working on looking at our own data and only our own data and having it answer questions about like things in our learn guide. Yeah. It'll be like a big it's it's, it's, it's tough. thing it's that tough. we're probably not going to use. But yeah. the idea of being on the cutting edge with technology and microcontrollers and all this stuff is we try a lot of stuff and some stuff we won't use. Um, but it's kind of up to us to be on the forefront of some of these tools. So if anyone is using any of these current tools like ChatGPT with any of the plugins or Bard, which can browse the web, um, let us know um, how you're using it with something like DigiKey and maybe we'll put it in Desk of Blade Data. Okay. Back to you. Uh all right, thank you. So I searched for uh, 220 microfarad 6.3, and it's like, yes, you obviously want electrolytic capacitor. I could have typed in electrolytic, but you know, it. it anytime you're looking for a voltage, you know, induct, uh, if you just put a capacitance and a voltage, it's looking like, yeah, hey, you're that's not a ceramic. Uh, let's look for active, and um, your question is, is it polar or bipolar? And then if you go to the overhead real fast, if you have this black marking that's the polarization mark that's the uh, negative and so if you see that black mark uh or a negative sign on the side um hold on i'll show on this on this uh board you see that there's a negative arrow and it's like a little negative sign and then here also there's a little negative so that means it's polar okay so let's go back to the uh, computer so uh, i'm going to select polar and also dash in place that includes it. Uh, and I'm gonna look for a surface mount. Although if I'm looking for replacements for that disc two, do I would look, be looking for a, an uh, axial uh, through hole? Let's also look for only ones in stock. And then we want to pick one that's the same size. And so uh, diameter, remember it was 6.3 and then the height was around six. You know, I'm going to say, hey, you know, maybe it's okay if it's a little bit higher. But of course, depending on what we're replacing, just make sure, like, you know, you have clearance. But it's always okay to pick a, a taller one as long as it fits, fits in that footprint. Next question, lifetime temp and operating temperature. This is, you know, totally dependent on the functionality of the product. Um, most are, you know, 1,000 hours at 105 degrees C. Um, you can get 2,000. Some medical devices or some devices that have extreme temperatures want a little bit uh, better lifetime rating. Of course, that isn't like total runtime. That's just like at extremely um, high temperatures. And then um, operating temperature. I'm not going to ignore this because it doesn't matter. And they have some, you know, use cases. Ripple currents, you know, it, it, this is all related to the ESR, the internal impedance. The lower the impedance, the more you're going to pay. For basic power supplies, Actually, you don't really have to worry too much. You usually can go with the cheapest, but it depends if you're if the power supply for your device really does need to have um, a, a good quality, um, low ESR, pay more. On the flip side, if you're fixing up these old retro tech things, a lot of them were not made with like, they didn't have the highest quality components at the time. Like we get stuff for so much cheaper these days because it's so much like easier to manufacture that I think even the most basic um, electrolytic capacitor is going to be fine for replacing just about any motherboard or arcade or game. Okay, so let's, uh, hold on. I wanted to, oh yeah, so I, I applied that. Uh, and then, you know, I'll just for fun, I'll just say cut tape because I only need a few to replace it. So I'll just make sure that I can buy them in a small strip. And then there are a few um, families. So if you look at, um, on the overhead again. Sorry, I'm going to hop back and forth as I do this replacement. 
this one does have a family code on it, FN. Sometimes you're not going to, you know, it's not like happens, I believe this is the Panasonic um, or Chemicon or Nichion. But sometimes you're using these kind of, you're replacing a generic company. The capacitor may not, the family may not exist because the company doesn't exist anymore. Um, but in this case, it does. So uh, can, can you go back to the computer and we'll select FN. Although, again, it's not, not really essential um, to do so. And then, boom. This is it. And this does look familiar. The Panasonic FN00JO. Uh, That's the data sheet, sorry. Yep, that looks right. 220 FN. That's the code. Um, yeah, that's, you know, it, they will even give you the marking so you can make sure uh, the series and the code and the capacitance is identified correctly and they're in stock. So if I, you know, if I have to replace a device that had that electrolyte capacitor, uh, this would be the link I could use. That's a great search. Wait.